let's go to Dave Hall, our prospect guru. Uh, Blackfish came out today. And the title, Harm, I know you read Blackfish just as much as I do. The title of Blackfish today, Dave, was Lekromaki and Ratu are feasting, Swedes are scoring in the SHL, and more. Lots of good stuff in today's Blackfish report. First of all, Dave, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, give us three reasons why Jonathan Lekromaki is getting called up to the team. Uh we need shots in Vancouver. Sorry, Vancouver needs shots like instantly. Um, so there's one. Um, he's our top prospect, our Vancouver's top prospect. So you know it's time for him to get a look, and that's about it. I, I, I'm I, I'm not in the camp of he should come up. So I, I don't have too many. Fair. That's what we were. I'm not sure if you heard our conversation, but we were just discussing how it's like there's no real opportunity right now with Dakota Joshua coming back. But my take basically, Dave, is that. If an opportunity arises, like there was one last week where Arshdeep Baines is getting top six minutes, like in my mind, that's the time when you can recall Jonathan Lekromacki. But really, he didn't go off until after that opportunity had gone. Timing is everything in yeah. the NHL. So so Dave, just tell us about Jonathan Lekromacki's past week and really the start to his AHL season. We see the point totals. We see the bajillion shots on goal. Tell us about his season. Give us some context for what he's done so far in the AHL. Well, context wise, I mean, he made his debut on October 25th. And since then, he's now second in goals and third in points in the entire AHL. He's not only leading, but dominating in that span in shots. He has 30, 34. I think the closest to him is 24 in that span. So he, he's come in guns a blazing, just shooting at will. Um, you know, whether that's a positive, like sometimes it's not always a positive as you know, you, you do wish that sometimes he'd wait a little bit longer for, you know, a little extra traffic to build up. Um, but at the same rate, you, you love that he's shooting. That's exactly what we were hoping to see from him coming in, like just gaining that confidence, just, you know, getting, getting acclimated to that speed and timing and just feeling the confidence to take those shots. So it's, it's been great. Um, you know, he finally got one and it's hilarious. He takes all these half wall, you know, howitzers, uh, doesn't score any of them. And then he scores his first by just standing in front of the net and getting an absolute tap in. So you love to see that. But since then, obviously the wheels, you know, the wheels came off and he's he's just been shooting at will and you know a lot of them credit to Atu Ratu as well like the two goals on Sunday a lot of that has to do with Ratu uh, his playmaking and also a big uh, nice physical check from him as well so it's been good um at the same rate he's also not dominating which is why like he he's playing very well don't get me wrong he's shooting a ton but it's not like he's going out there and uh, you know, lighting everything up. He's got four goals, which is great. Um, but there is still some, you know, physical and just overall elements that you'd still like him to just kind of marinate um, at the AHL level. So I personally don't know if it's time just yet. He's close. And, you know, 34 shots is nothing to scoff at. He's It's not like he's not playing amazing. But uh, I just, you know, pump the brakes a little bit, in my opinion. I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I was going to ask the next question. And I'm in the press box in there. Um... It's like testing out the arena music, so couldn't help but uh, but laugh there. Um, with Lecker Mackey, how is he looking as a five on five play driver? We know the point totals are great, but as far as like actually dictating play uh, and being an in individual play creator, what are you seeing from that perspective? Yeah, and, and that's kind of what I'm alluding to, like in, in the terms of like he still has some work to be done. Um, I know he's a minus five, and obviously, right out of out the gate, that looks terrible on the stat sheet i do want to preface that it's been a pretty weak defensive effort by the entire team you know the, the line the combination of breeze ball and woo as a combo i think they're minus 14 on the year so you know it's it's been a tough go just as a as a team so yes he's minus five but he's also out there you know 20 minutes a night so he's getting a lot of the you know the, the brink of of that uh that negative side but what I've liked is that he's no, he's not throwing hits and all that stuff, but he's getting into the corners. He's doing what he can to try at least go for those battles and come out with the puck. And when he does, he's had some nice looks. You know, he set up Atu Ratu a few times now, uh, where Ratu just missed the one timer for some good looks. Um, you know, there's still some elements, obviously. You know, we'd love to see him get into the middle a little bit more. I know that's just not really part of his game. We saw quite a bit of it, uh, you know, slowly start creeping to his game last year. But I think that's going to take time. Um, but just overall, like, yeah, you, there's still some that some more that we'd like to see in the five on five. And a lot of that comes down to his physical attributes. Um, so, you know, so far it, it's been OK. I, I'll just I'll leave it at that. Atu Ratu recalled to the team, Dave. Uh, your thoughts and just what you're expecting from him. Uh, Going to be skating on the fourth line, it looks like. 
Yeah, it's tricky. You know, I, ju I just tweeted this out where it's, you know, it's it's tricky. It's not something that Vancouver has had to really worry about in the past couple of years, but it, it's a it's a fine line between, you know, letting them stew and develop at 22 minutes a night in Abbotsford, you know, getting some points and then calling them up to, you know, go on the fourth line and get eight minutes, right? It's that fine line of trying to trying to thread that development versus reward because you want to instill a reward system in, within the system, you know, like you don't want them just to think that you're you're playing down and, you know, there's no actual end goal here. But, um, uh, you know, it, it, it was time for him to come up. Um, he's been dominant at the AHL level. He just he just stands out in a in a level that he didn't stand out last season for me. Um, there were nights that he did stand out like this, but it was a little bit inconsistent. Whereas so far throughout this season, he's on the ice. You can tell that he's on the ice. You can just tell that he's a step above most of the players out there. So I've been super impressed. He's playing, I think it was around 22 minutes. He's playing top line, top power play. And when there's a penalty, he's the top guy out there taking face-offs. I believe he's around the 60, 60 percent uh, percentage on the, on the face off. So he's been dominant. If there was any player that deserves a look, it's definitely him. The only thing that I had issues with, and it was a bit of a selfish issue. It was nothing actually against him. It's just those two, uh, Lekker, Mackey, and Radtu have been heating up, and I would love to see them work on a line with uh, Archie Baines to get his uh, his his wheels going. So that's a selfish thing by my part, but yeah. To your eye, where do you think Radtu has improved the most? Because you mentioned him not standing out as much as, as a play driver in the AHL last year, but it wasn't just that he wasn't standing out as a play driver. But he played his best hockey on the wing, and I think heading into this season, we didn't really look at Ratu as a center option. And so it's not just he's driving play, he's also doing it at center. It's a pretty significant leap. Why has he taken that leap? What parts of his game stand out as having taken a significant step forward? Yeah, it's a great point. And look, I'll be the first to admit, like I came on here many times last year and just said, look, like, don't like, let's cooler jets here like there's still some, some some things that need to be cleaned up he you got to give him credit he cleaned those up like the skating is the big thing i know it's not elite and i don't at this point it's probably never going to be i think it just you know he's he's just a little step behind but at the same time it's it's leaps and bounds about uh like over what it was last year i think that's a really big piece to his game that needed to kind of clean up just to just to be able to facilitate the play on both ends of the ice you know be the first one back be the first one in and um also just the work rate um there the work rate was there last year but it was just a consistency thing where you know he'd show up really big for two games and then go kind of you know motionless for for three four um but so far so good uh just with the work rate and yeah the skating is the big thing Dave, final thing for me. It comes from the chat. It's from LC250 in the YouTube live chat who asks, how does McWard and Wu look? You mentioned Wu and that pairing with Breezeball. Maybe you can expand on that a bit. But McWard as well. Uh, those two players, McWard and Wu, are they an option to have a look at at the NHL level on right D, where obviously the Canucks have had some issues so far this year? Yeah, and I was a big proponent on them being called, getting a look last year. The The issue with, I think, both of them, but especially McWard, I'll start with. I think the issue with McWard is he doesn't really stand out much in any particular fashion which is a good thing you know he's just he's just your solid like I, I don't ever see him being you know that top four defenseman moving the puck but he just gets things done and at the AHL level it it works um he's he, he doesn't he doesn't he's got a good first pass he's a good two-way defenseman and he just doesn't you know he's good he's just okay at pretty much everything so it just works for him at the AHL level and I think if you're looking for that kind of sturdy plug-and-play defenseman I think McWard could be um, you know, an option down the road. I really liked what I saw from Jet Wu last year. It's been a bit of a struggle and this year, and I think that has a lot to do with just, you know, the team, the team is also just learning itself a lot. There's a lot of movement going on. It's also tough as well because in the AHL, obviously you're playing a lot of games. They're just coming off of four games in six nights. Um, so there's they're playing a ton right now. And, you know, right now, like as you you mentioned, that top line is getting exposed with Wim Brisebois, Brisebois rather. But, uh, you know, there's been a lot of movement in the back end. So I think everyone's still just trying to figure each other out. Um, but so I really McWard's just been, you know, a, as advertised, just a sturdy, steady two way defenseman. It's been a little bit uh, tough for Wu. We have seen him a little bit more engaged in the last couple of games, which is nice. He's been throwing some big hits. Um, but overall, I'd like to see a little more from Jet Wu for sure. Last time you were on, you mentioned that Nikita Tolpilo was off to a really hot start. By the end of this season, do you think, would you be shocked if Tolopilo works his way into the conversation as potentially leapfrogging Archer Shilovs as the third string goaltender behind Demko and Lankanen? 
It's a million dollar question. And, you know, as soon as I, you know, pump his tires a bunch last week, he goes out and he, he goes in, lets four goals on 11 shots, gets pulled. Uh, Patera ended up getting back to back starts this week. So now we haven't seen Tolapilo basically since I was on last. And so it's, it's been a whirlwind. Um, and Patera, who was on the exact opposite spectrum, he was terrible in his first game, decent in a second. But since I was on here, he then went two goals in 10 periods of hockey. Um, of course, he ended up having that incredible uh, breakdown in the last 10 minutes of the San Diego game on Sunday. But uh, so it's been a polar opposite. And the only reason why I bring that up, it's because at this point, you know, I, I, Tola Pilo is my guy. I, he's, I, I love his game. He's so composed. He's comfortable back there. I, it, it's just, you know, at this point, it's just a, it, the consistency thing. I, it, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to really give a direct answer to that because we just need to see it on a more consistent basis. So um, I think he is, I think he definitely has warranted a look. He's been strong. He's, he's composed back there. He's, he definitely doesn't get phased by much. So I do like his game. Um, obviously I do believe that Sea Lodge, you know, there should be kind of a back and forth. I'd love him to see, get some games in Abbotsford and whether that means Patera goes up or Tolopilo. Um, so long winded answer. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's time to get, I, I would like to at least see him get a look, but we'll see the jury's still out in the goaltending. It's a, it's a complete, uh, oh, it's all over the place. <laughs> Dave. Great stuff as always. Thanks so much for joining us. People can read blackfish weekly on Canucks army every yeah, have a good trip. Tuesday. Thanks guys.